The building of protein is very essential to the functioning of an organism. In this protein building task, DNA acts as a master blueprint containing all genetic information about the protein to be created. The genetic information from DNA is transferred to messenger RNA or mRNA through a process known as transcription. Now let's learn how transcription takes place in prokaryotes such as bacteria. The prokaryotic cell does not have separations in terms of cytoplasm and nucleus. Therefore, both transcription and translation processes involved in protein synthesis can take place inside the prokaryotic cell at the same time. In prokaryotes such as bacteria, only one DNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme catalyzes the transcription of all types of RNA. There are three types of RNAs involved in the process of protein synthesis. Messenger RNA or mRNA, transfer RNA or tRNA, and ribosomal RNA or rRNA. The mRNA carries the coding information to the sites of protein synthesis. It helps to put together amino acids to make protein. The tRNA carries each amino acid to the ribosome according to the coded message in the mRNA. While the rRNA provides a mechanism to decode mRNA into amino acids. Transcription the first process in protein synthesis occurs in three stages. Initiation, chain elongation, and termination. In the first stage, RNA polymerase along with the initiation factor denoted as sigma binds to the promoter sequence in DNA and initiates transcription. This helps in the opening of the DNA helix and separates the two DNA strands. Now the second stage of transcription called elongation begins. In this stage, the RNA polymerase builds a strand of RNA using one of the DNA strands as a template. RNA polymerase uses nucleoside triphosphates as substrates and polymerizes using the law of complementarity. This RNA chain growth takes place in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. After chain elongation commences, the sigma factor dissociates from the RNA polymerase and can be reused. The final stage of transcription is termination, in which the polymerase along with termination factor represented by rho reaches the terminator region and newly created mRNA fall off along with the enzyme. This marks the end of prokaryotic transcription. The stages of transcription in eukaryotes are similar to that of prokaryotic transcription. However, there are some differences as well. Let's understand them in detail. Unlike prokaryotic transcription, which occurs in cytoplasm transcription, in eukaryotes, transcription occurs in the nucleus. There is only one RNA polymerase in prokaryotic transcription. However, eukaryotic transcription involves at least three RNA polymerases. The RNA polymerase 1 transcribes various rRNAs. On the other hand, RNA polymerase 2 transcribes the precursor of mRNA known as 
heterogeneous nuclear RNA or HN RNA. RNA polymerase 3 is responsible for the transcription of tRNA, 5 subunit ribosomal RNA or 5SR RNA, and small nuclear RNA or SN RNA. The processing of HN RNA marks another major difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription. The mRNA in prokaryotes does not require any processing. However, in eukaryotes, the HN RNA is inactive. Since it has a split gene arrangement with exons and introns, And hence, it has to undergo processes such as capping, splicing, and tailing. The first process is capping, which involves an unusual nucleotide called methylguanosine triphosphate being added to the 5' end of the HN RNA. Capping helps mRNA to bind with small ribosomal subunits during protein synthesis. The next process is splicing, in which the introns are eliminated and exons are joined in a specific order. Finally, in the tailing process, about 2 to 300 adenylate residues are added to the 3' end of the HN RNA in a template independent manner, giving rise to a poly A tail. This process is also known as polyadenylation. After these processes, the HNRNA becomes mRNA and the transcription process ends. The mRNA can now be transported out of the nucleus and further used for the process of protein synthesis during translation. A series of experiments conducted by scientists and biochemical experts proved that both RNA and DNA served as genetic material. However, the question that arose was, what exactly made both DNA and RNA suitable genetic materials? The answer lies in the fact that for a molecule to be a genetic material, it must fulfill four simple conditions. It should be structurally and chemically stable, which means it should not change with age, change in physiology, or life cycle. Yet, despite stability, the molecule should provide scope for slow changes or mutation that is necessary for evolution. Further, the molecule should be able to express itself in Mendelian characters, and also be able to generate its own replica to become a genetic material. Most biomolecules including proteins fail to fulfill these criteria. Even so, both the nucleic acids, DNA and RNA meet all these requirements. Although it is to be noted that DNA serves predominantly as genetic material, RNA also acts as genetic material in few microbes such as tobacco mosaic viruses and QB bacteriophages. And also performs the role of a messenger and adapter. Of the two nucleic acids, it was DNA that played a part in Frederick Griffith's experiment where R strain bacteria had been transformed to living S strain. However, though the transformation killed the mice, it had not changed the properties of the DNA. This can be explained by the stable structure of DNA that although being separated due to exposure to heat, it can come together under suitable conditions even after. RNA, on the other hand, 
is much more liable to change due to the presence of the very reactive 2OH group that is present in its every nucleotide. This makes RNA more degradable and reactive than DNA. Also, it enables RNA to act as a catalyst in several biochemical reactions in living systems. Moreover, DNA has thymine instead of uracil that is present in RNA, which makes it more stable. For this reason, it is also said that DNA has evolved from RNA with chemical modifications, making it more stable and as a result, a better genetic material. Yet, both DNA and RNA can mutate. However, viruses with RNA genome evolve faster by mutation due to the ability of RNA to mutate quickly on account of its relative instability. Nonetheless, RNA can directly code for protein synthesis and thereby easily express the characters. In this regard, DNA is dependent on RNA, not only protein synthesis, but also several essential life processes such as translation and splicing are evolved around RNA. Therefore, even though DNA is the preferred genetic material due to its stability, it is the RNA that is involved in the transmission of genetic information.